This is Joanna for The Verge, and I've reviewed a lot of Ultrabooks in the last couple of months, and at the end of each of those reviews, I've pretty much concluded that none of them have been as good as the MacBook Air. But I've realized that isn't a totally fair comparison, since those that are buying an Ultrabook are looking for a thin and light Windows 7 PC, and the Air doesn't run Windows 7, at least not out of the box. So here I've decided to load the MacBook Air up with Windows 7 and see how it stacks up against the competition. From a pure hardware and design perspective, Apple has made one of the nicest machines on the market, which is why we've seen so many of the other Ultrabook makers trying to literally copy it. While some of the other Ultrabooks on the market are lighter and have more ports, the Air is the most sturdy and is still the thinnest. But where Apple's hardware strength really shines through is underneath the lid. The high-resolution 13-inch display makes Windows look the best I've ever seen. The panel itself is very high quality, which means colors look really bright and viewing angles are great. The backlit keyboard is also really nice, and the keys have a good height given the thinness of the base of the system. But there is some learning curve to it, especially in the bottom left-hand corner of the panel where you have the function, control, option, and command keys. Each of those keys are laid out differently than they are in a typical PC, forcing you to have to adjust some of your finger positioning. But the amazing performance of the touchpad might make up for some of those keyboard quirks. If you've read any of my laptop reviews in the past, you've known that I've had a lot of issues with Windows 7 laptops and their touchpads. Lots of PC manufacturers have tried to integrate the buttons like Apple, but have really failed at it. Apple, on the other hand, has mastered getting the touchpad to work perfectly with Windows 7. In boot camp, basic navigation works perfectly, and two-finger scrolling is more fluid than I've seen on any Windows laptop out there. But there are some gesture limitations. Pinch to zoom and rotate are not supported in the environment, but if you do want those, you can run a virtual machine like Parallels where you do get the gesture support. Thanks to a Core i5 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and a solid state drive, the MacBook Air provides really solid performance, which is on par with the other Ultrabooks. But the performance you get really depends on what environment you're running Windows in. I saw better performance in boot camp with applications opening quicker than I did in a virtual machine like Parallels. That said, you do see the air trailing the other Ultrabooks in terms of resume and boot times. It took a full minute for Windows 7 to boot in boot camp and around the same in Parallels where you have to boot OS X first and then get into Windows 7. Up until now, I know it sounded like a really wonderful experience, but there are two factors that hold the air back from being that perfect Ultrabook. The first is battery life. In OS X, I got six and a half hours of runtime on our Verge battery test. But in Windows, both in Parallels and Boot Camp, I got four and a half hours. That's really disappointing, considering most Ultrabooks out there are getting at least six hours. The other major issue is price. The Air starts at $1,300 with a Core i5 processor and 128 gigabyte solid state drive. But in this case, you've got to also buy Windows 7, which costs around $120, which puts you just north of $1,400, which is a lot of money, especially when you consider the battery life setbacks. And that's really it. Apple has created the best Ultrabook on the market when it comes to hardware. The screen and the touchpad are second to none. But when it comes to battery life and price, it's harder to recommend than I thought.